This conference will now be recorded. Okay, this is the uh, Mono Recreation Advisory Committee meeting for January 12th, 2023. Um, looks like everyone is here. Uh, Dave Mool, Melinda Davey, uh, Ann Yeager, Sally Cohen, uh, Kim Heaton, and Emma Holmes are here. Um, we have a disclosure of pecuniary interest, if anyone has anything to add at this time. No? Okay. So we're going to do the um, approval for the agenda. Everyone had a chance to look at the agenda? Yes. Yes. Okay. Melinda? Okay. Yep. Do we have a seconder? Um, Okay, Anne. Okay. This, um, it, it, it sorry, looks like Mike, this might I... be out of order. Do we do a review of draft minutes for the last meeting before we approve the agenda for this meeting? No, mm -hmm. we review of draft minutes after we approve the agenda okay. for this meeting. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Okay, so let's have um, a vote for the um, approval of the agenda. Okay, favor. everyone in favor. Okay. Review of the draft minutes of the last meeting. Any questions that uh, have come up? The only thing I noticed was that it did talk about the amount of food at the Halloween party, and it mentioned that we don't need cakes. But I, I'd like to throw in there that we actually had so much candy in those loop bags that I thought it was personally, I thought it was overdone. And um, I wondered if that should, I, maybe I didn't mention it specifically last meeting. Maybe that's why it's not in the minutes, but there was just way too much food, way too many uh, cupcakes and so much candy in those loop bags. You, you know, the candy was all donated, correct? That, yes, but it did take yeah. several long, several hours to fill those loot bags. And I'll tell you, if I was a parent, I'd be throwing most of it out. A lot of it was just junk. It was like a dentist's dream. So I think yes. that's Halloween. Welcome no, to Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Well, humbug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, the kids were going to okay, go out and get Everybody's fine. That's fine. But I just wanted to buy note. I thought it was way too much candy for those kids to go home with in that loop bag when the next day they were going to collect up a whole lot more. Well, maybe, yeah. or maybe, or maybe not, right? I mean, the whole reason why we have the Halloween party is because in, in Mono, the route, I, mean, I, I know we have the subdivisions where you can go door to door, but the rural kids don't, they don't, they don't get it. Well, yeah, they come to our subdivision and they go around here. Their parents drive them up and they go around. So that's cool. Okay. cool. Lots of many cars come to our subdivision from out of town. So, but the cakes and cookies, though we paid for, we had a deal on them, but we paid the for cake, them. the the cakes we paid for. The cookies were donated. Totally donated. That was awesome. Totally donated. The only thing so, we paid for were the cakes. Right. So then we don't. If we're gonna, but how do you know each year to year whether somebody who's you know you're gonna get the same donation to the same level and so on, right? Like you don't. Dave, you have a question, comment? Uh, no, a comment. Uh, when we're examining the minutes, we should be trying to determine whether the minutes accurately reflect what was said in the last meeting. We shouldn't take it as an opportunity to rehash the things that we thought we should have said at the last meeting. No, I think I qualified that, Dave. I said, ah, perhaps I hadn't mentioned it. So I... I, I, agree. I don't recall whether you mentioned it or not, Anne, but it, we, we should be looking to see, did it accurately reflect what we said at the meeting? I, I don't recall. Well, we did say it was too much food, for sure. Okay, it was too much. We, we all, we all agree on that. Yeah, and I think that includes too much candy. But Okay. So let's um, get on with the, the adoption of the minutes from that meeting. Um, any business arising from the minutes before we get started with Maria? Well, I guess we, we already did that part, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
right? The business arising would be further discussion as to how much food gets donated and how much candy we put in the loop bag. But, okay, so we all set for okay, Maria then. Sorry, yep. sorry, just to reflect that properly. I mean, that's been that's been said by one member. Do you want that reflected that one member? Or are you all in agreement that there was too much candy in the loot bags? No, I'm, I'm not in agreement. Yeah, I, yeah, I think um, um, as we approach um, next year's event, then we can talk about uh, um, this aspect again. But I mean, you know, um, I, I have no problem with, um, with the amount. I Halloween. know that the feedback that Emma and I received about the loot bags, because we always get emails afterwards and we get calls and stuff. People were thrilled. People were like, we can't believe how, you generous. know, fortunate and generous the town is. Like, we are complimented numerous times for that party. So, you know, I'll pass that on to you. Okay. And, and also, I really appreciate the local businesses that you know some of them give us 150 dollars to spend on candy others just give us all kinds of candy i really appreciate that those businesses are as generous as they are with us okay i'll move the adoption of the minutes okay seconder i, I can second okay vote all in favor Okay. Okay. So, unless there's anything else, um, um, it looks like Maria, the time is right for you. If you can unmute yourself, and uh, there you go. There we go. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good to see some of you. <laughs> nice to meet the rest of you. Um, I sorry, Maria, I'll just get your name. It's, so it's Maria Burton? Correct. Okay, great. And it's the Bruce Trail Conservancy? Yep, yeah, it's the Dufferin Highlands Group. Okay, great. Yeah. So we, um, we wanted to follow up because we have been uh, we've had two initiatives that we've been working on uh, closely at, at our club and one of them is really much centered around uh, integration within our community and expanding our diversity and inclusion and so that was our motivation in speaking with this group was to talk about ways in which we could potentially integrate some of these um, specialized inclusive hikes um, with your committee as well but obviously we have dave and sally that represent and are um you know big advocates on the caledon uh bruce trail club and maybe there's some ways that we could create cohesion um across all of them so uh, so the, pur the purpose i'm sorry maria today is to um inform us about um, inclusive hikes that the Bruce Trail, the Dufferin Highlands Bruce Trail has planned for 2023? Correct. So we are, okay. um, we are using, we are leveraging some of the grant money plus all some of our fundraised money to create specialized hikes to invite specific um, groups within the community to, um, to come out and enjoy the just the Dufferin Highlands um, section of the Bruce Trail. I'm sorry. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Who, who are you? Who are you talking about? What do? You, what kind of a special? What What has been exclusion exclusionary about the hikes already? Aside from, of course, disability, perhaps. But is that yes. what you're talking? About? Yep, absolutely. So it's creating um, opportunities for people that don't necessarily know, uh, so they're not aware of, of the Bruce Trail and, you know, specifically what makes it um, 
um, special, but um, feature we want to feature certain um, sections of the Bruce Trail that we have. So we have like kids uh, hikes, we have um, things that focus on biodiversity, we have um, specific hikes that we're working with the DEI um, groups in Shelburne as well as Mono. So inviting people that don't necessarily, that are new to the community and don't necessarily know um, about the Bruce Trail. And so introducing um, them to the Bruce Trail and inviting them out on specific occasions. We're also working with two different, please, please, thank you. We're working with um, also the um, Legion as well as the Salvation Army to uh, so we're doing really specific hikes that are catered to to them um so shorter hikes more accessible hikes um where they can come out and uh be introduced to not only the people within the club but then also the features of the trail so what is, is it that, that you great what is it that you're asking the recreation advisory committee to do for you well, we were wondering if we could um, collaborate with you in terms of creating promotional uh, promotion and awareness around these hikes that we're doing. And obviously, if there's other groups that you think we um, may be able or may be interested in um, attending, that would be great. Um, well, Maria, one, one idea that comes to mind, Maria, is one of our biggest events that we run each year is the Make Mono Shine event. And I'm just wondering if um, if there are areas of the Bruce Trail that we could perhaps um, incorporate into that event so we could help clean up parts of the Bruce Trail as well. Yes, ab absolutely. So I know we've, we've attended that uh, last year. Mm -hmm. um, and on that same day, we host our um, Pine River cleanup. So that is one section, but we could also um, do another section of the trail and maybe maybe closer to um, where you're hosting it at Mono Center. Sally, yes, go ahead. Wait, wait a minute, sure. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, this year, actually, um, we have a meeting. Uh, the Caledon Club has a meeting on Saturday, and they're planning to do something on Earth Day, which is Saturday, April 22nd. And I suggested that they also join in with Make Mono Shine. So maybe all of us can do something, and we, we can do a, a trail cleanup going in two different directions and, and maybe do some hikes and, um, and hopefully have better weather than last year. But um, yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, let's coordinate. Um, Kim, did we use a date for our Make Mono Shine already? It's April 22nd, yes. So it's the same now, day. I, I, will, I will tell you that um, I've spoken with the J, with J. Kipps and that band is not available for that day. So I don't know if that makes any big difference, but um, the Jason Kipps band is not available for April 22nd. They are available for April 23rd, but we have advertised it as April 22nd. Okay. Yeah. So Sally, you're saying that your club has already got, has got something else to do that day? No, we're, we're planning on doing something on April 22nd. And I suggested maybe they also integrate it in with Make Mono Shine and do it out of Mono Center. Um, oh, that would be great, Sally. Which we kind of did last year. But but expand it, but they're they're going to discuss it because they were going to do their own thing. So, uh, okay. But maybe we can do some. I don't know. Um, Maria, are you planning to do your targeted your your hikes? Um, some on that day, or you're doing them different times? Um. Yeah. No. We could we could definitely do one then, uh, for sure. And and it would be good, I think, to promote it through our you know, these new partnerships that we're creating to get some more community, newer community members coming out for that, for sure. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Uh, Maria, what is the fee to join the, the Bruce Trail Club? So the, the it's, there's been a recent change. Um, Dave and Sally probably know it off the top of the, their head more than I do. 
<laughs> oh, if you want a membership, it's seventy-five dollars. But anybody can hike on the Bruce Trail. You don't have to be a member to hike on the Bruce Trail. Um, we encourage membership because it helps, but you don't have to. Correct. Correct. And these hikes that we're doing are free as well that are for targeted groups. So it's going to be things like introduction to hiking um, and then doing uh, introductions to specific parts of the trail, talking about the history of the trails uh, and, and things like that. So coming up, once we kind of solidify our schedule with the the featured themes of these these trails, I I would love to be able to share that um, with the with the committee and then see um, what we could do for collaboration moving forward beyond the main time. When when you say collaboration, like I know the town of Mono Maria would be more than happy to um, promote your events on our website on our social media pages. By all means, you just have to send us the link. Yes. and uh, you can send it to myself or to Emma and um we will make sure that it gets on to the uh you know social media emma is my social media guru so um she's really good at at spreading the word about things and um another staff member looks after all our um content on our web so um we by all means are more than happy to promote anything that you know any hikes that kind of thing and i i think um you may know or um Maybe it's the Caledon and Bruce Trail, but I'm working closely with um, for two special hike days, one in May and one in October. Um, Sally, is that with Dufferin Highlands or Caledon? No, that's with, that's with Caledon. That's some. Um, that's that's our Caledon, prediction right? hike. The prediction hike is in May, and then yeah. the end to end on one of the days of the end to end would be would be our yeah. Normal like center. we we work closely in that we you know we um, basically give them our parking lot all of the parking at mono center for those two hike days so we close it off to you know being able to rent out the pavilion or the community center because i wouldn't have enough parking for renters of the community center plus people using the bruce trail so you know we basically give the bruce trail you know use of the area for those two days so we're very happy to work with you guys um as far as rack's involvement um, I didn't know when you mean collaborate, like, are you talking about them physically attending your events or assisting with your events, or are you talking more on promotion? Um, on promotion, and then if there's any other events that are coming up that make sense for us to be present at, um, just let us know. Like with our events, absolutely. Are you yeah. good with that, everyone, or? Yeah, and one other thing, in Emma's needs assessment, I think there was some interest in hiking, um, so, so by promoting it th throughout the town of Mono, maybe you can get some more people out who would not normally hike, like they might be a little nervous about it, but if they come out with a group, that would be good. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're going, so we're going to be having some, uh, we're working with Brown Girls as well as a group. Um, and so we're going to be having some featured hikes, uh, for them as well. Uh, and they're also within our community and they're going to be integrated with the the shelburne dei so we know that some of those folks haven't really been out on 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 the trails and hiking and so we're excited to kind of uh introduce them to the trails and get them out that's great yeah. have you spoken with the monos dei committee like to me that this is where i mean i understand <laughs> your um affiliation to rack with us with for the hike part but i'm thinking for um, the yep. inclusiveness, you should be speaking with the DEI committee. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes. With, yeah, so we're working with Shelburne, Mono, or, and Orangeville DEI. Okay, great. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. And so if nothing else, you've, we've just uh, <laughs> kept you up to date with what, what we're doing. And, um, you know, we're certainly happy to be having the get off the ground this year. Sounds great. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. So Thank you, Maria. Okay. okay Bye, thanks, Maria. Maria. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Um, Mike, if I can just jump in here for a second. Um, I've asked Emma to join us tonight to talk about the uh, new, uh, the programming needs survey. 
Em is on a bit of a timeline this evening in that she has another commitment for six o'clock. So if we can just kind of, um, you know, rotate the schedule a little bit and put new business on prior to unfinished business, that would be great. Sounds good. Okay. Hello, Hi. Emma. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, Kim, have they already got the report? Like they've seen it? Yes. I, everyone was emailed yeah. the report and asked to read it. it this was basically more um, not for you to um, re rehash the report, but a, a question and answer period for them if they have any questions regarding your report. Okay. Perfect. I just have a comment. It, it was a very good, thorough report. You're uh, very skilled at writing reports. Um, Thank you. And um, and there's um, you had there's some good ideas. And I noticed like there's there's people asking for different things. Are you planning to start a few more recreational things, um, either through RAC or directly through um, your department, like um, fitness and stuff like that? Or what what are your plans? Yeah, so with doing the needs assessment, we can kind of see what the residents want. And we can now me and Kim can kind of sit down and plan for like this year, upcoming years, um, what's feasible to get going. So for example, like we saw that Home Alone is um, was wanted and that was something that we could do on a fast turnaround with getting staff certified to instruct. And then as we see it's taken off, we've um, almost sold out. Well, we have sold out one and we only have one spot remaining in our second um, program. So by seeing this, we're able to kind of adjust to where we want to go um, or not where we want to go, what programs we want and what events we want to offer. And then that way we can offer things that the community want and we're not just putting on events and programs that we're not sure what the turnout will be. Now we can see what is wanted um, by our residents and can focus on those programs and events. Okay. I think it was important too in our study um, as far as special event days, like that's one of the reasons why I wanted um, RAC to see it, to see um, what the community, how the community felt about special events. And um, Emma, if you wanna just talk a little bit about that, that would be great. Yeah, so um, in one of the questions in the report was, how, are you satisfied with the amount of special events that are happening? The answers or the options for answers were yes, no, um, or keep the amount the same. And over or 720 um, respondents said that they want more special events than what is currently offered. So that was 62% of the um, population of the people that responded. So that kind of shows that there are a need and a want for um, more special events because people, especially after the pandemic um, has kind of altered and um, not slowed down, but we're getting back closer to that uh, pre-pandemic world, people are wanting to do things um, and we see that the popularity of them. So beyond that, we also asked what kind of special events the uh, respondents wanted to see. So coming in number one was music in the park um, with 61% of respondents saying that they would likely or most likely attend this event. Um, tied for second was environmental and nature events, kind of like our Make Mono Shine. So, um, so that was 60%. And then also tied for second was holiday events, um, such as like a spring celebration around Easter time. Um, and that was also coming in at 60%. So it states that a lot of respond or we saw that a lot of respondents do want more special events. So kind of now taking this information and seeing where we can incorporate another event um, to meet this need of, or this want of demand from the residents. So I think that just um, collaborates or emphasizes that um, the work that the RAC committee is doing with Winterfest, with Make Mono Shine, with the Children's Halloween Party is very much appreciated by the residents. And um, I mean, I know this committee works um, very hard at those, and I'm not saying that we increase it. I'm just saying that, you know, we do such a good job they, they'd like to see it increase, but there you go. Um, you know, it, it was kind of a, I think a pat on the back for you guys at the the special events that you you are putting on and that they are appreciated by the, rec, excuse me, the residents. Did anyone have any further questions or? Um, Emma? Um, 
it's about, thank you about the about the music in the park thing i mean i know every time we have anything going on you know with noise um people are bothered by that um but i also noted that it was really they people are the, the numbers were bigger still for the even though mono center is in the center of mono um people seem to prefer menorah park and um that, that that's where you're thinking that you would be do you cater to that or do you say you want more events come on into to mono center and have them where there's you know you're less likely your noise is less likely to affect people and your parking is is there and so on i um i mean menorah park has parking too but it's now got that big building in the middle of the parking lot so i <laughs> Have you turned your mind to that at all, or or um, or not yet? I would say we haven't totally like decided on any locations for any like say new um, programs. We want to make sure that we're maximizing the use of all of our parks and facilities um, because Mono does have so many amazing um, parks that we can use. So we want to make sure that we're showcasing those, um, whether it be our smaller parks or larger parks, um, making sure that they're all used. So we haven't totally. You'd have to go through all the logistics again with sound parking um, because you, we do see that there's such a need. So that'd be something we'll have to look into further. Because when, when we have had the J. Kipps band at the April Shine and at the Winterfest and everything, everybody, everybody in the immediate vicinity is availing of the afternoon event and so loves it, right? It's when it's it's when I, I'm you know just thinking of the stuff that happens in the CVC even during the day that you get complaints from people who are not availing of the activity just because it's such a populated area you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I was interested to see that somebody even wanted to do something in the new little Fieldstone Parkette. They wanted to see mm -hmm. programs there. It's like yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I enjoy Emma, okay, uh, Anne, go ahead. So I have a question. Um, first of all, I I compliment you for sure emma on your your report i especially love the graphs because it tells so much so uh, thank you for that i do have a question um i think you said there were 1153 respondents mm -hmm. um they are not that isn't what does that represent as far as how many respondents you might have gotten and are they all distinct households or could one household give you four respondents, for example? Or do you know that? Um, yeah, so if the household, yes, there was no, like we didn't want to put in a, like some of our surveys said, just like the fireworks survey, you had to put in an address. We didn't want to do that because we didn't want to, again, this is an anonymous survey, unless you want to enter your name for the giveaway, the gift card. Um, we did go through and if it was, they did track or our system that we did the, survey on and you couldn't use the same ip address so if you had the same ip address it wouldn't let you input so we weren't having say melinda do 10 surveys that wasn't happening it was only one per ip address um, to make sure that all the results were were accurate um, and they did have to kind of input what town they were from or they did put in what town they're from um, and then again if they lived in mono what area whether it be the north, east, south, or west area of Mono, just so then we can correlate if, um, say, with the people in the south end, are they wanting only programs in the south end? So we can kind of dig deeper into that, um, those answers, and kind of see correlations between them. So going back to what I was really trying to get at, and what percentage of Mono actually responded to this? Is there any way of yep. knowing that? Yeah, so 80 or 87.4 percent of all respondents lived in Mono, um, which totaled oh, out to a thousand and eighty. No, I saw people. that. That's not what I mean, Emma. Excuse me. She had 10.65 percent, I believe it is, Anne. Sorry, I didn't hear that, Kim. I what believe percent? I believe our overall percentage. We have nine, just over nine thousand residents in Mono, and she got 1,153. Actually. 1,005 of those respondents were Mono residents, and we've right. got just over 9,000. So when you equate that out, it's a little over a 10% um, feedback. Our normal rate of return on surveys, we're lucky if we get 3%. Right. 
Right. But when you said the population is 9,000, does that include children? Yes, it does. Yes. So one would presume that children are not likely to be filling this out. Right. So that would make it even higher then. Yeah. Yeah. There's like 7,500 people who can vote. I think it was like 77. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So I th that's really an important aspect of the survey. Like, is it relevant? So if you can get 10% results, that's pretty good. Excellent. That's a very good sample. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, um, thanks. Emma, I have um, a question. So um, great report as, as others have said, my question is more concerned with the human resources aspect of adding more events because I know the RAC committee, I mean, we can certainly help promote events in terms of our human resources of giving our time for more weekends throughout the year. I mean, we're, we're pretty uh, tapped as it is. So I'm just wondering from the Mono Recreation Department, are there human resources available to run more events? Or are we gonna be looking at um, volunteers um, to start, um, adding some more events. Yeah, so we touched on this at the council meeting on um, Tuesday night. So we're actually hoping to get a volunteer program into place in the very near future. Um, lots of surrounding municipalities do have these in place. And to get volunteers um, directly for recreation programs, you can sign up with your areas of interest. So that is something we're looking to do so then we can get those volunteers. Again, um, you guys do a fantastic job with the events that you're putting on. So we wanna make sure we're bringing in extra volunteers so we're not burning out um, our committee and able to still provide events for the residents, but making sure um, that, again, we have more volunteers coming in to assist. Okay. Like things, and things I, like. I, I, yeah, go ahead, Kim. No, I was just going to suggest to um, carry on with that is in other um, communities where Emma has worked in the past. Um, so what they might do is they put a call out for, you know, just what's your special interest and in? would you be interested in sharing that special interest with and, you know, with others. So, you know, they got responses for people that were interested in, you know, I make birdhouses or I know how to make quilts or I know how to knit or um, I, you know, I love to teach dance, that kind of thing. And yes, I would be willing to share that um, my my talent with with others and so the town of Mono's participation would be yes we'll give you the room for free we'll we'll donate the room to you if you would like to put a class on and uh um it's it, it so it, it really works both ways in that the town is able to provide additional programming to residents um at you know little to no cost for all involved so it it's 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 one of the one of the ways that we're looking at at being able to provide more program by all means not all programming can be run by volunteers absolutely not and uh you know just the fact that we've been fortunate to have emma as long as we have um and the incredible asset that she's brought to this this recreation department and all that she does i think um is is something that is going to be um hard to live without so um yeah uh, you know we we're very very fortunate to have emma and, and what she's done and um yeah i look very forward to continuing to work with emma in the future on all of this and and what she's bringing to mono i would also uh, say that one of the best ways for um for our club to help develop um some of these recreational opportunities, our committee that is, and is to partner with a lot of these clubs, open houses. I, I know that um, um, our family has participated in a lot of these open houses for, you know, the ski club or, you know, if other clubs are more are interested in doing some of these events like the tennis club, pickleball club, lawn bowling, like it's, a, it's just such a great way to introduce yourself um, within the community. So if we could help uh, clubs, I mean, um, they could certainly contact us and um, and um, we could um, certainly help uh, develop their uh, open house uh, concepts. That's a great, great idea. And I think I think that's how we're very slowly trying to get the Mono Ping Pong Club up and running. And, uh, you know, it's uh, 
it's a club that definitely needs our help, but they're, you know, the few people that are in it have, are great. Um, they just need more members. So yeah, there's a club exactly, Mike, of that what you're talking about is to try and help these clubs get up and running. Hmm. Okay, any other comments or questions for Emma? Okay, no. thanks Emma for your time. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Enjoy Thanks, that. Emma. Appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Um, so we're going back to unfinished business and deferred items. So the Winterfest planning, right? Yeah. Um, I think for the planning, I just how did my sheet go? I don't know this morning. Um, and let me just bring it up here. It's just to go over the to-do list and see where everybody's at. Because I know I've been getting emails like. Um, which has been great, but I want to make sure I'm up to date on everything. So let me just bring up our Winterfest. The one thing we can't plan for is winter weather. I know. <laughs> Think snow. Think we snow. Are. <laughs> Gosh. And, you know, one of the reasons we backed it off to February is is to give us that one little bit extra week of pos, you know, for snow. Oh, next thing you know, we're going to be in March putting it on. Um, I, actually, I had that up this afternoon. There it is. Mm. Okay, there it is. All right. So, do you guys have your your list there? Just trying to find it. What day was it that you sent the final one? Oh, here, the, the fourth. Yeah, you were, uh, fourth. The revised, revised, revised one. Yeah, that, that one. <laughs> that one. All right, I've got it. Okay. So what do you say we just go through it and make sure that we've got everything covered? Does that sound like a plan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So. Um, MC for the day, Melinda, you're good with that? Just yep. making announcements and all of that, and I'll help you with notes on, on what to say. Well, and the big uh, thing is the snowflake thing at the end, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll talk to John to see whether or not he wants to be part of the draw for that again. Um, parking monitors. So I'm thinking everyone on our committee has a job already. Like, like I think everybody is going to be busy, especially, well, throughout the event. So parking monitors are going to have to be volunteers. Is that? That's correct. Sound correct to you guys? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Okay, so I know I've got I've got one person that may be able to be a parking monitor, but we probably should have another one. Is um is Councillor Nix uh, going to be available that day? Because that's something he has done in the past. Well, unless there's ra Jack Rabbits, because if there's Jack Rabbits, he comes and he helps to set up, but he's not there for the actual Winter Fest because he goes to Jack Rabbits. That's okay. normally um, been oh, seen in that. Kim, I think that's not correct. I don't believe Fred is doing Jack Rabbits this year. Oh, yeah, he, right, that's right. Oh, he's given up. Right, right. Right. Okay. Yeah, he and Franca have resigned from that. Okay. Yeah. So I will definitely talk to him then possibly about that. But I, I believe that the Mono Nordic Ski Club has designated him uh, and Franca oh. as oh. as helpers with uh, ski instruction. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Um, but you know he would probably be available 
prior to the event up to the time that things start. Okay. Um, I think that like most of the parking is like from 12 to four, right? To make sure that people, um, right. well, I know I've got one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put Todd on parking, my partner. I'm going to put a little jacket on him and he doesn't know that yet, but that's, that's kind of where he's okay. going. Where you're long. I have a suggestion for somebody who might be willing, and if he was, he would be good, I think. And that's Dave Daw, who lives just down the street. Good one. Um, and and he normally attends the event anyway. Yeah, you need to so, bring Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great one. Okay. I will definitely get in touch with. Do you know Dave, or do you want me to call him? Oh, I know. Yeah, I know him quite well. Oh, would you ask him? Sure, I can do that. That'd be great. Okay, so I'm just gonna put here, uh, okay. Okay, Smith. Great, okay, awesome. Okay. And I, I wonder, uh, wonder also if we might ask Craig Fleetwood if he would do it. He's not doing anything else at the at the moment, is he? That we know of. Weren't no, they going to be away? Or is that weren't they going to be away for Winterfest? No, I uh, think I'm, Yoni was I'm working. Not sure. Oh, okay. I think she was working. That's why um, she wasn't going to be able to come. But um, yeah, she, she's working at Mansfield Ski Club. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, so, we can ask him if he's not available, then he's not. But if he is, okay. I mean, he lives right there and he'd be a good guy. Good That'd idea. Great idea. Great idea. Okay. You want me to ask him too? Sure, that'd be great. Okay. I'll ask those two guys both. Awesome. Okay. All right. So, um, hot apple cider, secure propane. I'll, I'll make sure we have propane there. Burners, pots, ladles, oven mitts. So the burners, um, Dave, the burner that you bring, that's for the, um, you bring, do you bring a burner for hot apple cider or that's Ross, right? No, I, you know, Sharon and Ross Martin used to bring a, a burner for yeah. that. I'll ask them if I can uh, borrow it again. Yeah. I, I do have a, well, a number of propane burners that I use when I make maple syrup that they could be available if uh, if they need to be. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put Dave Mole or Ross Martin and Kim to confirm. How's that sound? Okay. Is that is that okay? And yep. you had and you had the um, the the council manning the actual cider right yes and i've confirmed sylvia jones her presence from 12 to 2 as well to be at the cider are, are there any security guards there for her sorry <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be some people asking her questions about uh, since she's now the minister of health <laughs> oh gosh um Anyways, we'll leave we'll leave that part out of it right now. That's not um, but and and um, we've I'll also look after the cider. Um, and again, Sylvia Jones' office has very kindly got uh, got 500 cups for us, which we'll be picking up tomorrow that they're donating for us to use. And I'll make sure there's napkins out there. And as you said, volunteers will be council and our council and uh sylvia jones okay mm -hmm. yeah just to, just make sure the cops don't have doug ford's picture on them <laughs> no it has her name on them we got those cups before did did some did we with respect to the emceeing thing did we um did we invest in a new thing or do i still have to be connected to the no we got a new one for volunteer appreciation Okay, great. So would it work outside as well as inside? Do you think? Yep. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, you yep. guys are going to be sick of hearing my voice by the end of the day. <laughs>
you'll have fun. Um, I mean, it's it's not something that it, it wasn't a big, you know, thousands of dollars machine, but it was enough to get us through volunteer appreciation and uh, seems to work OK. So it will Great. certainly let people inside know what you're doing. And if okay. you have to talk to people, people outside, then we're just going to have to literally pick the speaker up and walk it outside. All right. Terrific. So. OK, great. Um, Dave, you're looking after the marshmallow roast, right? I am. I, I, I'm going to ask your, uh, your staff member, Dave Matkowski, to help me out in advance of the event because Sally and I are both going to be away for the yeah. entire week prior to the event. So sure. I'm going to ask him to, to take some stuff from my place over to the park. Sure. No problem at all. Um, just okay. just one thing, just one thing, Mike. Um, Anne is disappeared, but she's having technical problems. That's why okay, she just, I see that. Yeah. Okay. She's trying to get back in. Okay. Um, so, uh, Dave, the other thing was I, I put you and I on just making sure that everything is, you know, we get the right spot for everything, you know, maybe sit down and you know, put a little map together prior to the event, um, you and I, maybe it's a matter of just, if you can come over to the office one day and, or I'll, I'll maybe I'll do one and I'll just send it to you and then you can, um, if you want any changes. Okay, yeah. Does that sound like a plan? Okay. Sure, that's fine. Um, sleigh rides are confirmed. They will be here. I will tell you they've gone up in price. They're $800 this year, so. Yeah. <laughs> what were they before, Kim? Six hundred. Oh, when we first started, they were five. Then they they've been six for a long time, and then um, he just said that insurance has gone up, feed has gone up, transportation's gone up. Anyways, it's eight hundred. Uh, and, and he'll be here. He'll be there regardless of the weather. Um, yes, that's what he says. Yeah, if if he if there's no snow, he brings a wagon and they go around um, on Mono Center Road and around the parking lot kind of thing. Yeah, we've had that before too. Mm -hmm. uh, skating rink, um, the skating rink at Mono Center is it's the the liners in and they're working on it now. It's just a matter of you know mother nature cooperating with us so um those volunteers are usually really really not usually are real they are very good at making sure that it's ready for winter fest provided that uh um the weather cooperates so cross-country skiing looks like we're good there um snowshoeing um I am having a problem with trying to get a hold of the Upper Grant School Board. I used to just call right out to um, the actual um, office at Mono or out at Island Lake. I used to have the phone number, but they're they're not running anymore. So I'm trying to get a hold of them to find out the, the, the snowshoes must still be there if I can get in and borrow them. Anyways, I'm working on it. Uh, okay, tobogganing, snowshoeing. Okay. Oh, snowshoeing hike. Sally, will it be a snowshoeing um, hike or, or a hike hike? It depends on the weather. Um, there's okay. a meeting of the Bruce Trail on Saturday, and we're going to discuss um, what we're doing. And um, so it'll it, if, if there's no snow, it'll be a hike hike. And if there is snow, um, they'll adjust it. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. And what times would you like to run hikes? So the event runs from 12 to 4. What time would you like can hikes? Like 12:30 and 2:30, or what do you want to do? Can we just? I don't know for sure. Can we just say to be okay. announced or? Okay. Sure. Can we go back to the tobogganing? We spray lines so that we like the lane with paint. Do we do that? We We're used just, to do that. Um, what I should change that to is now what we do is we put um, hay bales or straw bales 
right. um, at the bottom, like by the fence and along the side by the where it goes over into a bit of the forested area. We, we fill that with straw bales so that people can't go off. But uh, at one time we we thought about, you know, you spray you spray a line down the middle and you're allowed to toboggan down the one side of the line and on the other side you walk up the other side of the line. Yeah. That was the reason why we did that. Right. So I'm going to change that to, to um, straw bales. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, weather dependent, right? Uh, broom balls. Sally, I'm sure you sent me an email saying a friend of yours or a, a, um, someone you know has broom ball equipment. We have broom ball equipment from the 1980s, the, actually real broom ball equipment that um, Dave and I used to use in our ski club. Our friend inherited it from the guy who started the ski club. So we, I'm going to pick it up in, uh, it's in Aurora. I'll pick it up and I'll bring it there. I'll have it there. And um, Great. And then, I'll, then I'll take it back. Now, where would we play the broom ball? On the rink. It's, it's usually so playing on the rink. Yeah. It's played on ice on a skating rink. Yeah, it's okay. On are so the uh, two nets in working order uh, kim nets we don't have nets anymore town doesn't have any you nets just, you can just put up pylons yeah. you know the, yeah then only nets we have or the only nets that are ever out there are volunteer or um people skating bring them yeah. and you, you might want to set the games up um width wise because it depends on who's playing but um, I know to, to run down the length of the ice on, in your boots is not always easy. It depends if it's children or adults or whatever. Yeah, usually the, we do a, um, a kids versus adults game. That seems to be the most popular concept. Well, that's fine. Does, does, um, are there pylons in the, in, the, um, in the storage room downstairs? Or? Uh, I will make sure there are. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's pylons in the um, enclosure, the garbage enclosure at the back of it, um, but I will confirm that. Um, fat bag rides. I know um, Yoni had been in touch with Cycling Elements and unfortunately they're not able to attend the event. And she also has reached out to Hockley Valley Resort. And I know she has sent two emails to them and to my, because she copies me on them, but to date, nothing's come back from Hockley Valley Resort as to whether or not they want to participate. Um, I'll follow up with Hockley, okay. They, I know they rent mountain bikes, but did they have a fat bike thing going on too? Um, I think I didn't know that, but Yoni had said that they do. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Boo, 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 boo. okay. Snowmobiling. I, I have not been in touch with them yet. It's, it's happening. <laughs> um, obstacle course. So Dave, you wanted, I'm just gonna make a list here again, pylons, buckets. Um, what else did you say for your obstacle course? Lost Dave. I'm, I'm not sure I was involved with the obstacle course, was I? I'm, I'm, Dave, I'm so sorry, I meant to say Mike. I, I meant to say Mike. Okay, no, I'm, right. I'm, very sorry. I'm looking at Mike and, and I'm saying Dave. Mike. Um, okay. I know you wanted pylons, bucket. What else did you um, want? Yes, so that's the, that's the issue. The, the good news is I have a group of so far five high school students who are going to help um, create and supervise the obstacle course that awesome. day. 
Um, all former Mono Amaranth um, school students now in high school in grade nine, so they need their volunteer hours. Um, so yeah, the, the problem is going to be getting enough equipment that's suitable for the weather that day um, to use, like if, if there's access to crawl through culvert uh, pipe type things, like those the like uh, tires, things, anything that we could possibly have like uh, dropped off for the Saturday. I was planning on have, joining them on the, the Saturday to put it together. Um, but I'm just worried that we're not going to have enough raw materials to work with. That's, yeah. Um, I can talk with public works for sure and see what they've got. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. I'm trying to bring Ann in on FaceTime. They lost their internet. Oh. Okay, but Mike, I think uh, I should supply you with uh, a few tires. I'm not sure how many, but I, I think I might I have about four more. old tires around my place that I could uh, I've got provide. If that was right. I've got some tires. If you wanted to do the run through them, they're not big know. enough to, they're not, yeah, they're just car tires. Yeah, either. Um, run through or throw a football through like it really de just depends how icy it is that day um so we'll just have to Can figure it out on the fly what about hula hoops for throwing a football through i've sure. got we've yeah. got hula hoops yeah what whatever we have we'll we'll make the most of okay i'm thinking chairs as well like some of the plastic chairs um you know you could put a I don't know, a two by four or like a piece of wood over top of one and they have to jump over it. I don't know. I have skipping ropes if you want to use some skipping ropes out there where they have to skip or something. Yeah, that okay. sounds good. Thanks, Sally. Okay. Skipping ropes from top rope for heart. So okay. as Kim, far as you just, Kim, you just reminded me of something I wanted to mention regarding the cross country skiing. Sure. Uh, Mono Nordic. Mono Nordic would like to have some chairs from inside the building and sure. maybe a table or two. People yep. need to sit down to change the boots. that okay? Absolutely. Just we'll get them out the day of, of absolutely. They'll be right there. Sure. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. And we'll give them, we'll use the plastic ones, Dave, the white, the ones I use at the gazebo. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, okay, so um, as far as the snowflake draw goes, um, if anyone, like if, if there's, I'm not asking you to go out and ask for things, but if you know of anyone who might want to donate something, that would be great. Um, I'm looking after doing all the asking like um, to local businesses um but um you know i didn't know whether there might be a jar of maple syrup hanging around by somebody that might want to donate think, some. i think dave we can donate some maple syrup can't we <laughs> did you hear yeah. Dave? Uh, yeah, I you, made, you made you made more this year than than previously right you had a bunch left i remember you saying we still have lots left we, we have we have sufficient, yes. Oh, that'd be awesome. We can bring a we can bring a we can bring a leader over. That would be great. Yeah, just you know, if you if you know anybody who kind of does any like, I'm gonna reach out as well to when we had the um, what do you call it, the the craft show at, at Christmas time or in November at menorah um emma's going to send out a letter to all of those people just to see if they'd like to donate to the snowflake draw um so anyways we've got some ideas oh yes yeah. another another suggestion um zach gamage over at mono center brewing might be willing to donate something he, he probably cannot donate beer because i think it's against the law but he's got lots of swag there, hats and t-shirts and stuff like that. 
and he's okay. very anxious to put in business. So you might ask him. I I not might I will. <laughs> Great idea. And Kim, I have been in touch with um, with Axe, and they said they'd be very interested in in um, doing something as well. So I just have to follow up with them. Oh, great, Mike, that's awesome. Okay. That's awesome, okay. Yeah, I have to, because we, we also ask for things for the um, Make Moto Shine Day now, like for um, businesses to sponsor a gift, you know, so that we do the draw there, so that when people bring in their bags of garbage, we give them a ticket for the draw to, I mean, we don't have anywhere near as many prizes, but we do ask the local um, businesses to to help us with that. So I'm kind of trying to pick and choose who I'm asking for Winterfest and who I'm asking for Make Mono Shine. So I don't want to be constantly asking the same businesses. So good idea. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of I'm I'm looking at that going. Eh, I'll ask them for another one. Yeah. Um. Okay, so advertising, um, yeah, the flyer I'll send off to you guys today because we just we just finalized that today because we wanted to find out whether or not Jay Kipps was coming and he is. Uh, so um, we like to put him on the flyer. And so I'll send that off to you guys today. So anything you can do to try and help distribute that, like to any of your associations, um, that would really help us. Plus, we'll get it off to the schools. I'm not going to put an ad in the local papers because even from um, Emma's, um, what do you call it, survey, that was the lowest way of, ad, like, the that was the lowest response um, that we received was, that people said, when we asked, how do you find out about Mono programs? An ad in the paper was the lowest response level that we received. So considering what it costs to, yeah. to advertise that way, um, I think we're much better by reaching out to social media as best we can and um, um, you know our website and all of our user groups, our sports groups, and just getting out as best we can that way. We'll put yep. it up on all the local mailboxes. So yep. if you know Sounds of any other way, let me know. Um, photography, Ooh. I'll ask Andrew if he'll be there that day. If not, I'll be there. But Andrew normally is great. He comes out and takes a few pictures for us. Um, do we want music inside? I guess we do, right? Want music inside, so Jay will be playing outside. Uh, oh, what are we? Um, when would we have the music inside? Well, we've got we've got the community group Bruce in there. We've got the snowflake draw. Um, you know, it's just kind if of it's music not too loud. Yeah, as long yeah. as it's not too loud. Right. People yeah. sometimes want to talk and the, talk to the community groups and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's it's usually quite loud without any uh, music. music in there because they're constantly moving those heavy chairs. So I would feel yeah. with music and everything going on, some people wouldn't even be able to talk to uh, people at their booths. So do you want me to worry about it or not? Probably don't need it. Yeah, I'm thinking no. I'm thinking no. No? Okay. Okay. Well, certainly that's, that's where last... people are going to get their food and they're going to be sitting at their tables, hopefully, having conversations with people. So I'm not in favor of having extra noise in there besides just people. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh... So uh, cash floats, just want to make sure pick, uh, that the Pickleball Club is aware that they need to bring a cash float. Yeah, or, I know. Okay, cool. okay, great. Our treasurer will provide me with one. Great. And I'll have the one there for the snowflake draw. 
Um, so we won't need a sound system. Oh, a sound. Yeah, we do need it for the MC. Okay. Um, okay. I think we're good. Oh. Just, well, we, just, we need to talk, just talk about food a little bit, just just to go over things, because that's very important. Okay, we have we have um, we have uh, meat chili and vegetarian chili, um, and we have um, we're going to have um, um, from Costco. We're going to have like the larger hot dogs. We're not doing sausages because that makes it. Um, I mean, I'll have a temperature probe. Because I'm trained as a, so we'll check the temperature. But hot dog or sausages have to be pre-boiled, and then they have to yes. be put on ice. It becomes very difficult. So the hot dogs are easier. Um, they're easier to store, and it's um, so we're going to just go with the the big hot dogs, and we're going to have some small hot dogs for children, um, some a, a tiny number of um, vegetarian hot dogs just in case somebody asks, and um, we'll have cookies and different things, and we're going to set up something. We're going to have um. We're going to try to not run every everything out of the kitchen. We might want a table along the side where we're going to put some some drinks, and we're going to have a toonie table where um, people come up and 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 can buy buy um, pretty good sized cookies, not, not that big, but good sized cookies and different things for a toonie. Um, but then we'll also run out of the kitchen, so we're going to have two areas where we where there's going to be um, cash or whatever. Um, Allie, it'll um, be cash because for, um, for the hot dogs. Are you going to be boiling them in the kitchen or do you want me to be doing those no. on the barbecue outside? Um, I think we have enough volunteers, so we'll, but we do need a barbecue. I was just about to ask, is, does um, Town of Mono have a barbecue? Can somebody yes. set that up downstairs for us and, and we'll provide um, people to cook and then we'll just have those people bring them upstairs. Um, yeah, we, we've, well, we we've, set it up outside. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be outside, but they would have to yeah. bring the hot dogs in to the kitchen so we yeah. can serve them. Yeah, so we, we we have all our own volunteers for that, so we're we're good. Great. Okay. And so, um, so what's your price? Because it's a fundraising thing for you. What's your price? What is your pricing? Well, what what I did is um I, I've got different prices. I asked my son works at a ski area in Thunder Bay, so I asked him what they charge for chili. Um, uh, they charge five seventy five for a, a bowl of chili because, but I'm not sure if we're going to charge that. We haven't decided. Um, the other thing he suggested, which is a little different than you've done in the past, but it's very convenient, is they do saltine crackers with it if people want them. Because otherwise, if you buy bread and butter, you end up with those leftovers. And so um, the saltine crackers sounded like a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. And um, most of the drinks will be a tuning. We thought, um, not coffee, coffee would be a loony, things like that. But we'll also do, we're doing hot chocolate tea, coffee. Um, we're gonna have pop there. So um, all the prices will be quite reasonable. Uh, the chili would be the most expensive, which is probably gonna be $5. And we're gonna try to keep it even, we'll see, either five or six. Cause I also looked at what they charge um, in where, where our cottages in that municipality, they had an event at, at um, uh, Christmas time, like they had, um, they, and um, the, the little library there catered the food, and I got their price list. And they were okay. selling stuff for six dollars and for um, like for for sandwiches and stuff like that. So um, it's still pretty, awesome. it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. What have what we did done? We charge what for we chili done? last uh, last yeah. time? Well, that was in 2020, and I think prices have gone up since 2020. And um, right. I, I'm not sure what your prices were. Yeah, I have my price list down downstairs, but they'll all be Kim, it'll, it'll be five or six dollars. Yeah, but Kim, what did we do when we were handling it, and it wasn't a fundraiser? It was, I believe, three dollars for chili. Okay. Um, four dollars for three dollars for chili, three dollars for a hot dog, four dollars for a sausage. I'm just going off memory here. Those were about our prices. A dollar for a drink. We didn't do pop. We did uh, juice, I believe. Um, coffee, that kind of thing. Right. I, I'm, just from events that I've gone to, like up at my cottage, people don't complain if it's five bucks. I mean, that's. I like don't think five you'd have bucks. any. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you'd have any difficulty at all with that, Sally. I just. Yeah. I don't. So, but, now, but are you going to have? cash because you have to, have have to well i asked him to put on the on the um 
the advertisement something about um, cash only because they have to bring cash for the um, snowflake draw and it's cash right. for the kitchen. So make sure you put cash only so people bring cash because you're not yeah. doing you don't have uh, you don't have a square or anything to do the snowflake draw. So you got it. It's all cash. Yep. OK. So make sure that's on the poster. Be, uh, uh, or else their website. Available? Um, I price Sears Donuts and their um I, my price list is downstairs. I think they work out to a dollar thirty three a piece. So mm -hmm. um I mean so we'd have to if we sold them for for uh for two bucks it's not much profit. If you sold them for three, some people might find that expensive. We were thinking of possibly bringing in some Tim Hortons ones. I don't know if people would. Uh, for our toonie table because those ones actually come in a little lower and you could put them on the toonie table for for some people but we're making cookies using my son's recipe from uh camview nordic center in thunder bay and he gave he gave me a lesson on how to make them big enough and flat and and they they're quite nice and you put um you can put in we're putting in smarties and and possibly um we'll have some with smarties some maybe with with um cranberry um those those cranberry things and some with cho chocolate chips some with sprinkles some plain no rice crispy squares well we might try it we'll see <laughs> I, I have to attempt to make them <laughs> <laughs> they're my favorite it, um, it was so interesting when we had our meeting because somebody said what about rice crispy squares and everybody said I, I don't I never can make them right. I can never make them right. <laughs> Everyone, so good. But we're going to try to make it fairly simple. We're talking about $5 for chili and then there's the toonie table. And that way it's real clear. Toonie anything on this table is 2 bucks. Chili, hot dogs, 5 bucks. Except the little hot dogs will be cheaper cuz I think we got some Yeah, like yeah, we'll have they might be a toonie. I don't know. Yeah. And you've got all the condiments and everything. You're good that way. Uh, all the condiments. Now, what about bowls to serve the chili in? So I was able to get a whole bunch of cardboard bowls at a Great. thrift shop, brand new, all packaged up. I have 60 of those, as well as small little cardboard plates for the hot dogs, a dollar for those, another 60. So once those are gone, I think we were going to use real uh, china. And we right? use the bowls. And we use the bowls in the kitchen, and then we wash them after. I'll just have to. I don't have bowls at Menora uh, or at Mono Center. I'll have to have them brought up from Menora. That's that's why I'm asking. Okay. I, I thought okay. there were the the little bowls there, but yeah, they they normally are at Menora, so I'll have okay. them brought up. And and we need napkins too. We'll have some napkins there. And oh, and cups. We'll use um. We'll we'll use um, like paper cups because if you have, we don't want to have the china out in the middle. Other than the bowls, we'll have enough volunteers to pick up stuff quickly. Okay, so I don't have all that. Like I've got my paper cups for the what do you call it outside for the cider. So you guys will have to bring paper cups. We'll bring paper cups for the hot chocolate. Um, I think I might have some for hot chocolate and for um for tea and for uh coffee if anybody wants it and um the uh the ratio between um meat chili and vegetarian i'm mm. i'm wondering if that's at least like 12 to 1 because we've just <laughs> in the past had so much leftover vegetarian chili there's there's one pot of vegetarian and i felt that we we probably have some people that might come out who are vegetarian so if they do eat there you have to offer them something um they may not eat there um and we have mostly it, it's actually a well three to one yeah we just have one pot of vegetarian and if, if nobody if there's leftovers i'm sure that um somebody will take care of the leftovers okay okay um and we're going to have the popcorn maker going as well. We normally have the town's popcorn maker. So um, we'll be selling popcorn for probably a buck a bag for popcorn. Now, there was a problem with it at the Halloween party. Did it get sorted? Yes. Okay. Yes.
Okay. Um, we've got all, I mean, I've already heard from some groups that have confirmed a community table um, and we've got the letters already to be sent out to all of the groups that I haven't been in touch with yet. So, um, yeah, so, so far we've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I don't, I don't need a table. I can't be in two places at once. You don't want a table? Okay. No. Okay. Um, Kim, what about um, signage um, for people who may, you know, bring kids or themselves be a little bit under the weather, but, you know, they want to participate in things in terms of coming inside with certain symptoms? Uh, should we have signage outside? What do you mean? Like, if you're not feeling well, don't come in? <laughs> Something yeah, like that. Come. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good point, Mike, for sure. Um, Unless you put it in your advertising online and stuff like that. I mean, most people seem to know that, but yeah. There wasn't anything like that for the Halloween party, was there? No, there wasn't. You're right, Anne. So, there and, and my understanding is it was so crowded at the Halloween party. It was very crowded upstairs. Yeah, and there was no, I don't, I'm just saying that there wasn't a First sign then. It seems a little odd that we would do it now. People were still wearing masks. I wore a mask at the Halloween party, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. I wore a mask at the Halloween party, but there were, I would say the majority of people were not wearing masks. I mean, I can have a sign put on the, on the door saying, if you're not feeling well, please head home, not into the hall. Sounds good to me because things, things are a little bit different now than they were at Halloween. Um, okay. So I would like some people to have um, an extra layer of protection, just just a little heads up, like, hey, if you're if your kids, you know, complaining about a fever or something like that, or you know, vomiting, please head home. Yeah, I will. That's a great idea, Mike. Okay. Um, anything else you guys can think of that we're We no, haven't thought sounds, of. No, sounds thorough to me. We're good. Mm hmm. Okay, so just think snow. <laughs> think snow. Think snow and cold weather. So that's good. So we've got five minutes to talk about um, the euchre tournament. Well, actually, they, yeah, we we do we there, we must talk about as well because we have had. Uh, did I not put it on here? The bicentennial. Yes, yeah. the bicentennial. We we yeah. need to talk about that because um, we did have an email sent to us from the bicentennial subcommittee or the like um, wanting Emily? to know if RAC wants to or members of RAC want to participate in the planning and the organization of a bicentennial event, which they're planning for September, I believe 17th. Oh, they moved it to September? Yes, they've oh, moved it to I September thought, I thought it was at Mono They were originally looking at July 1st and they've now moved it to September 17th. That's a Saturday? It's a Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, is that right? Because I've got written down here this September 16th. But at any rate, I'm away. So I'm not able to help. Well, so I guess what we just, what I need to know in order to get back to them, it does RAC as a committee want to participate in the planning of this event and, mm -hmm. and being there to help run it on the day of? This is the Heritage Committee that is um, heading it up. They're the ones that have. Yeah, and that well, and then there's a, a the Heritage Committee um, have basically subbed it off into you know members of the Heritage Committee who are interested 
and then members of the public. And from what I understand, there's been a meeting of the local residents um, regarding the event. And um, this is who I received the email from, I was one of the residents representing the Bicentennial Committee as to what RAC would like their involved, or would RAC consider being involved or what our, what RAC's involvement would be with the event. Yeah, I personally, I would, I would just say, uh, I would leave it with the committee and, and, and let them um, help organize it. And if, if they want to reach out for any type of assistance, but I wouldn't want, you know, two different committees kind of sharing something. I would, I would let the heritage committee run. with. Well, no, I don't think it would be us. It would be like members of like RAC saying, yes, we will look after food or we will, um, I don't know, you know, we'll send two of our members over to sit on the Bicentennial Committee and be a part of that. Um, and we, and you know, RAC will commit to being there that day, those kinds of things. I think that's what they're looking for is how much help they can get, both in the planning and in the actual carrying out of the day. I kind of feel like we should be involved, whether we have the manpower to do it, maybe a, a different matter, but I think it would be desirable and a nice thing for us to, to be involved and to try to help them out. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want a member or a couple members of RAC to, you know, rather than all of RAC, having to go to all of the planning meetings, but maybe one or two members of RAC go to the planning meetings and then bring that information back to RAC and say, you know, this is what's going on and. Yes, that, that latter idea I think would be the, the one. And if, if you're looking for somebody to, to represent RAC on their committee, I, I guess I could do that probably. I'd, so I'd be willing. Okay, so how does the rest of RAC feel? Like, I think this needs to be put to, a, you know, um, RAC, you know, um, RAC agrees in um, assisting the Bicentennial Committee by providing a representative. Um, how do you want to put it? I just wish I knew more about what their plans were. So it's hard to commit to something I'm just not, you know, really aware of. Yeah. Why, why I don't send Mono Center or something? All I know Pardon? is they they're looking at Mono Center Park or Mono Center, and I understand that they had all kinds of ideas bouncing around at their first meeting from having a it's called a white a white table or event something about where you line up rows of um eight foot tables and cover them in white tablecloths and then everyone wears white to the event and then everyone brings a um it's like a big potluck meal and you and you put your potluck dish down and everybody helps themselves like that was one idea they they had talks of a dinner dance they had talks of a picnic um and this is just kind of what I'm I'm getting from an individual that was at that meeting. Okay, so why don't we um, agree to send um, one or two members to their next meeting and then take it from there? Okay. And depending Sounds on the night, I, I could go with Dave to to the meeting and then just give our input then. Okay. Right. Great. So I will forward your email addresses on then to the Bicentennial Committee. Is that work? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's fine. Yep. Okay. Okay. A few minutes for the euchre and then we are out of time. 
<laughs> so euchre um euchre is uh planned for friday february the 10th it's twenty dollars um to purchase a ticket um it, the f first the five five dollars off of every ticket is going to go towards prizes for the event and the prizes are first second and third and it's just basically divvying up that five dollars so if we get if we get 40 people we've got two hundred dollars and you know you divvy it up to maybe a hundred dollars for first place 75 for second and 25 for third something like that um uh, your $20 also includes one ticket for a beer or a glass of wine, and it includes munchies. So, and it, it includes, you know, probably you'll get at least three rounds of euchre in. And Melinda and I can vouch that it's a lot of fun. Oh, lot of it's, fun. A, it's almost too much fun. <laughs> yeah, it's such a great night. It's such a great night. Like, I'll be there. Yeah. I still can't play euchre, but I'll be there. <laughs> we we may have to randomize game playing a little bit because there were some pretty savvy players last time who picked the opposition depending on how much they had to drink, and you know um, <laughs> they were the winners, and they, they made okay, very logical so, choices. <laughs> Mike, can you remember? That's a good question because Emma asked me today. Did everyone? play in partners so you you moved with your partner or did we play individual yes yeah, indi we, that's what i thought we played individual okay okay so uh, are you, sharon, are we sharon and ross were uh were were um superstars that night too that's right they played more fairly than others so they did not come in the top three i don't think <laughs> So, so are we, are we required to sell tickets? I'm kind of curious, how do you then do the rotation? How do you match people up to be partners? And how do you know who they play? Is there a, oh, it, it's, a master? It, we set it all up. We did it last time. It was just kind of like, I'd, I'd have to look. It's very. It was it was kind of like, like musical chairs. Music, you just I was just sat saying, down wherever you music, felt like music. it. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's not really then, a system. There's not yeah. really you had to, you had to play with someone you hadn't played with yet. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't play with the same person more than once. But you could play yeah, against you could play yeah. against the same people. Yeah, yeah, it, it's very easy this year after what happened last time. We, we can just randomize each round and just give give people their their proper uh, placement. Yeah. And, it was just some fun. Yeah, so okay. it's that, my, it sounds like your memory is a lot better than mine because I'm going to have to really, I was trying, my memory's being taxed as to how we did it. I, I mean, I've got my file and I'll look at my notes, but I might be calling you then to say, what did we do here just to get that? I remember we had the big chart and everyone's name on it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, how many games and all that good stuff. Yeah, a heck of a lot of fun. I'll be there. Uh, I'll be there again. Awesome. Do, do you need Do you need more volunteers to help on the night, or are you okay that way? I'm I'm okay volunteer wise. Like, um, basically, all there is 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 like setting out the the munchies. Um, somebody looking after the bar. Um, somebody looking after recording the um what do you call it the scores as they come in um i have my i have my smart serve i just have to find my thing but i actually have my smart serve if you need someone at the bar that's good to know because i like to play euchre so that way i don't have to <laughs> i have serve to find bar. my card i don't know what card is yeah that would be great sally yeah, and you know, I'll send you guys the poster. Like, if you could just talk it up and um, try and get people out, I'd love to have forty people, so we have ten tables. Mm -hmm. That would be that would just be awesome. But it is, I'll tell you, it's a fun night. So, um, so if you if you want to come as a volunteer, um, Sally, you're coming as a volunteer. 
I, if I, yeah, I, I can do that. Who's coming to play? Who's coming as a volunteer? Or are you coming as both? I was going to come as both, but mostly volunteer. Right. But uh, but I'll put my hat in the ring and lose. But you know. Well, if we money. need play. so, <laughs> Anne, are you going to come? You're, you're muted. Muted. Your, you're muted in. I'm still away. I'm away from the fifth oh. to the twelfth. Right. Oh. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. I will. I will come and play, Kim, and I can also organize the movement. Um, so that uh, everyone gets to their next um, seat uh, appropriately. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. And yourself, I'm sure. Pardon me. I don't know how to play euchre. Me neither. <laughs> I'd need a lesson if I were. I to used play. to play euchre a lot, but I haven't played euchre in probably forty years. Well, I gather it comes back because everybody said, oh, I used to play and then they could play. And I thought, well, if everybody's been so long, I'll just wing it. And there's, it was very difficult to wing it because people go very fast. Well, I'm yeah. still looking at the cards, but you'll be I, I had not played since university and I just sat down with Ross and within five minutes, I mean, uh, I was okay. Yeah, it, it's fun. So, um, yeah, it's not an overly expensive night to put on. It re it really isn't. Um, like I said, twenty bucks, five so fifteen dollars per person. We have to run it, and uh, I just get a liquor permit, and it's just beer and wine. And I'll I'll go to um, Mono Brew Company again and see whether or not they'll um, provide the beer, and uh, I'll go to Hockley Valley again and see whether or not they'll provide the wine. Sounds great. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. so, do we sell That's tickets only. or how do we do that? Yeah. So, oh, good question. So um, what we're going to do is set it up online so everybody registers and can pay online. It just makes it so much oh, easier. Okay. Um, if there's, if you, if you find people who just say, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm definitely going to be there, but I'm not coming, then get their $20 and that's fine. We'll, will call me i'll sign them up myself or whatever you know yeah when when is your registration going to be online what's your date uh, it's today, it's a month from now right today? yeah so andrew said today what's what yeah he so the ping pong got set up today so andrew's um i imagine he'll be able to set that up tomorrow for us so so let's say registration for it will go live on monday live on monday okay great okay Yep. Monday. What time does it start? What, seven what time do you start? What? Seven o'clock. Seven p.m. Seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah. All right. Something more to add to my calendar. <laughs> I know. Busy. And if anybody wants to play ping pong, next Friday night is our ping pong tournament. We're looking for players for that. It's fifteen dollars, I think come to that no alcohol um but munchies so we're looking for players for the ping pong tournament okay i don't know i can't play okay. that either okay <laughs> you're getting okay. any of those really fancy guys that stand eight feet back from the table any people like that show up because i don't do that but otherwise if it's just regular <laughs> back and forth i would play <laughs> Um, well, that's how I play, so All right, that's then. what I'll be doing. You right? and I can be partners. Okay, all right. I think I got Karen Rosenbrock. She's coming, too. So. Oh, okay, awesome. There's, there's, there'll be three of us there. <laughs> and Emma, four. And Emma, okay, good. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to play ping pong, just call me, let me know. I'll put your name on the list, okay? Yep. But I'm going to send you the flyers as well. Yeah, but okay. well, yeah, put it on social media, right? So, so we have to uh, make a date for our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. What um, what are you thinking, Kim? Um, so our next meeting, so our next event after this is um, I mean, other than euchre, um, is make mono shine, which is April twenty second. So, um. What if we were to meet like 
February 23rd. How's hey, that? Can you check the calendar? Or February 16th, that keeps it at. Yeah, well, yeah, February 16th or 23rd. The 16 is better for, for moi. That's good with me. And 16 works better for me as well. Now, one thing I was going to ask you guys is um, uh, Council on Tuesday night have um, now decided that um, effective February, all meetings of council will be taking place during the day. Um, and I wanted to bring that forward to RAC as well to see whether or not you would be interested in is, is there any reason why we couldn't meet during the day as opposed to five o'clock? I know um, for me, it would certainly, you know, be better would, as opposed would, to- Would 3.30 to five o'clock be the day? Would that be okay? I mean, that that's better um, unless it's breaking up people's days. Would nine o'clock work till 10.30? Or is days, that, this is Thursday? No, Mike's saying no, you have to work. No. Um, okay. I would say afternoon would be uh, a lot better. Is this a Thursday? Mm. Thursday the 16th. Yeah, that's a Thursday. Um, so I play pickleball. Well, I play pickleball till 3.30. Oh, okay. But I could go, what, I'd have to drive to Mono Center. Is there a day you don't play pickleball? <laughs> no. No. Oh, okay. 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 No, there are days I don't play pickleball, <laughs> but it might conflict with somebody else. No, I. I, I can I'm just. just we, I can just. We uh, don't have to change the time. It was something that I wanted to throw out there because, um, for me as staff, for me doing nighttime meetings like this, I get time. Then, you know, I get in lieu time for it, which means I'm. It gives me time to be away from the office. So, um. You know, council would prefer that I do these kinds of meetings during the day, if possible. Three thirty to five, Mike. You can do that on a Thursday. Okay, but Sally, that just, sounds like would, that's not going to make I, it I for can, you. No, I can I can just leave a little early. I can make it. Three thirty. It is. I'll, I'll come in my pickleball clothes. So yes. February the sixteenth, three thirty p.m. is our next meeting. February 16th, 3.30, yep, okay. got it. Okay. Okay, yeah, so motion great. to uh, adjourn. Okay, motion. Is Dave, seconder, Councillor Davey. Okay, all in favor? Yeah. Okay, definitely. Okay, have a good evening, everyone. Okay, you see guys, you you or you see can. See you at Pickleball, or see you wherever <laughs> we're gonna be, <laughs> something. <Soon. Pickleball. laughs> <laughs> Wherever. Adios.